But the Lord is good, amen? amen? And I, too, am so honored to be a part of this team, Brother Swaggart, who I've always been my hero all these years, and to work alongside of him is one of the highlights of my life, and Sister Swaggart. And then Brother Donnie and I have a good, close relationship because he can, he can rough me up anytime nobody sees it, but he does, <laughs> in a good way. <laughs> because I love him dearly, is him obeying God that started this whole thing in 2011 and started this journey. And then Brother Gabe, who's taken that mantle of the cross and taken the mantle of, of Brother Swaggart and, and the whole family to keep it going. We know that if the Lord tarries, that this place is going to be the same for years and years and years and years to come. No doubt about that. And the men that are behind the, all those guys, you know, just unbelievable men of God. One thing I, we, we do once a month, we have a pastor's meeting. And one thing that I've been in pastor's meetings before, and it's very interesting to see who tries to outshine the other one. But in this meeting, in this church, in this ministry, there's no egos in the room. And they all love God, and they love the message of the cross, and they treat each other with great respect. And I love all these men I serve with and serve with you every day, an honor to serve with you guys. Even though I'm the, I feel like I'm the least most qualified to do anything, but Brother, Brother Gray made it possible that he gave me a uh, certificate the other day, and I actually now am the honorary, honorary doctor, have a doctorate degree, honorary from the University of Hard Knocks. <laughs> so, I got a doctorate degree now, honorarium, but I got it from the University of Hard Knocks, and if you've been a pastor of a small church, you probably could get the same certificate. <laughs> but I just thank you and also love each one that we see in this congregation all around the world. What an honor it is to be a part of this ministry and a part of this church and part of this network around the world. You know, we have some people here today. I think I see them right over there. They came in from Norway this weekend. Are y'all here? In the, where are y'all at? Yeah. To the right. There they are. They're from Norway. And they've been emailing and saying, we'll be coming, we'll be coming. So they finally said, we got our tickets. We're on our way. So they're going to be with us for the week. And, of course, the best for last, my wife, Trudy. You know, we've been together a long time, and I love her dearly. Been through some storms and battles and everything imaginable. But God has been faithful, and I love you, sweetheart. And God for you. Amen. If you would go with me to the book of Psalms, chapter 107. Verse 1, chapter 1, and I mean verse 1 and 2. It says, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Amen. For his mercy endured forever. Let the redeem of the Lord say so, whom he had redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Let us pray. Father, we just thank you today for your love, for your grace, for your mercy. Lord, we thank you, Lord God, for the power of your word. We thank you, Lord, for the cross, the completed work that you did on the cross for us. We ask you, Lord, to anoint us tonight to bring forth this word. And we just thank you, Lord, and believe you, Lord God, to touch your people. And we give you all the praise and all the glory and all the honor. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, we, we, if we look around today, we definitely live in troubled times. The world has just absolutely gone mad. All around the world, even in our own government, there is a... a, a, a strong antichrist spirit and on the earth every evil is guided by evil evilness and we look at what we're going through and you go you say well how in the world can we face all these things i want to bring some things out in the book of psalm 107 when you start off the the, the chapter which says oh give thanks unto the lord for he is good for his mercy endured forever then he begin, the, the psalmist begins to deal with several issues in life that somebody will go through. And I want to look at several of them, 
but I want to really focus on the last one that we're going to talk about. If you look at verse 4, this is one type of life that people go through. Actually, it's talking about the children of Israel, but it also could be talking about us. It says, they wandered in the wilderness in a solitary way. They found no city to dwell in. Hunger and thirst, their soul fainted in them. Wondering, they were wondering. Go to verse 10. Another type of individuals and people that we're going to be looking at, these type of people, category of people, says, such as sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, being bound in afflictions and iron. Why? Because they rebelled against the words of God and condemned this counsel of the Most High God. Therefore, he brought down their hearts with labor. They fell down, and there was none to help. Let's go to another category of people. Verse 17. Fools, because of their transgression and because of their iniquity, are afflicted. Their soul abhorred all manner of meat, and they draw near into the gates of death. Then let's go to the verse 23, this type of person. Then they go down to the sea and ship and do business in the great waters. These see the works of the Lord and his wonders in deep. For he commanded and rised the storms when which lifted up the waves thereof. They mount up to their heaven. They go down again into the depths. Of their soul is melted because of trouble. They reel to and fro and stagger like a drunken man, and they're at wit's end. How many have ever been to that place? And all four of these categories are different situations that they're going through transgressions, just in the wilderness, all these different types of lifestyles, if you will, all are different in its scope, going through different things in their life and scope, but the answer is the same. No matter what category you fit yourself in or what category you find yourself in tonight, it's the same. The answer is the same. No matter what you're facing, no matter what you're going through, look at verse 13 for the wanderers. I'm sorry, yes, yes, for the wanderers. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them out of their distress. Hallelujah. He brought them out of darkness in the shadow of death and broke their bands in sunder. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works for the children of men. Praise God. Those that wondered, verse 6, I know I'm going to a different place, but verse 6, then they cried unto the Lord, in their trouble, and he delivered them out of their distresses, and he led them forth by the right way, gave them a place to go. Hallelujah. That they might go to the city of the inhabitants. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. The fools, because of transgressions, just look at that. Verse 19. Then they cried unto the Lord in their distress, in their trouble, and he saved them out of their distresses. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works for the children of men. And of course, the last one, which I think where a lot of people are today, they're at wit's end in life. The situation we see in 
Israel, the situation we see in our country, the situation we see even in the condition of our church, of the church. But verse 28 says, Then they cried unto the Lord in their troubles, and he bringeth them out of their distresses. He maketh the storm calm. Hallelujah. So that the wave thereof are still. Then are they glad because they be quiet. So he bringeth them unto their des desired haven. I think this is related to the message of the cross. I believe that this correlates with the message of the cross. No matter what situation you're in, no matter what place you find yourself in, no matter what we saw them finding themselves in, then they cried unto the Lord in their distress. Hallelujah. Let's look at a couple of things. Mark 10, you're talking about how God responds to cries. Mark 10, verse 49 through 51, there was a, a blind man called Bornemaeus. And all of a sudden, he heard that Jesus was coming by. And they, and they said, he said, is he, come, is he coming by? Yes, he, that's him. He gets, gets up, he said, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. He cried unto the Lord in his distress, and the Lord heard him. Not only did the Lord hear him, but the Lord, whoop, stopped. Turned around and said, bring him to me. <laughs> First thing he did, he said, I'm going to forget my past and go to the future. Took his blanket, threw it down, said, I'm not going back that no more. But he cried unto the Lord in his distress. Another time was Peter, at the command of the Lord, said, Peter said, if it be you, Bid me to come. Because the Bible said that Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the boat, started walking on the water, and he paid attention to the circumstances and difficulties and situations. And he started sinking. Then he cried unto the Lord. And the Lord reached down and picked him up. We well, said, so that's Bible. What, what about now? And the reason why... I break, you know, I don't like to really repeat a message that I preach. But two weeks ago, my wife and I and Molly, that's the dog, you know, Molly has to go, you know, but she'd be, we'd be we left Molly behind, she'd be in therapy. <laughs> Molly had to go, my little five, five pound little runt. Well, somebody found, you know, we have some friends that live in Tennessee, and you, they used to come here, but they live in Tennessee now, Stephen, Charlotte, Pennington. And they called and said, won't you stay at our house one night on the way to West Virginia to go on vacation? I said, well, okay, we could do that. So then they called me back and said, we're going, because they were looking for a church, and Charlotte and Steve's criteria is they have to be the church and the pastor has to be a supporter of Jimmy Swagger Ministries and also preach the cross. Well, they're not going there. So that's what she starts the conversation with pastors when she called. When she got through a few of them and got to this one and said, before we get started, do you believe in the message of the cross and do you support Jimmy Swagger Ministries? And the guy kind of giggled at her. He said, well, he said, yeah. He said, I pastor Jonesboro Church of God. My name is Mike Lusk, and I was in the first class in 1984 for Jimmy Swagger Bible College. <laughs> and yes, I preached the cross, absolutely. And he knows Brother Gray. He remembered Brother Gray. And he said that, yeah, he said, so they started going to church there about eight weeks ago. 
Well, they found, they told him that I was coming by their house and because watches, he sees us. He said, well, have Pastor Dale preach. I know he's on vacation, but have him preach on Sunday morning. And they called me back and said, would you preach? I said, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll preach that Sunday morning, you know. I think I have a little church of about 50. And so I, I was preparing myself, you know, for the message, and, and we left out on vacation Friday, that Friday. And Thursday morning when I got up, and let me just say, when God speaks to you to do something, it's not because you... He does it because you, he does, not only does it do because you hear from him, but also because he wants to meet a need. A gift is to be given. So he, the Lord spoke to my heart and said, change your message. So I just took my ribbon, put it in my Bible, and I changed the message. We headed out Friday morning, got to Alabama. Stayed in Alabama. I hope nobody disowns me because I did, you know, Alabama, you know. But I st stayed in Alabama near Tuscaloosa, too. Terrible. <laughs> Love you, Alabama. So in my, I'm in, in the room, and I just started jotting a few little notes down for the message Sunday morning. Saturday morning, as we're leaving Alabama, I get a phone call, and it's from Charlotte, and she said, you really need to pray. She said, because Pastor Lush called me this morning, and their grandson, Friday night, was killed in a head-on collision at 28 years old, heading to work. And my first thought was, we're going to really pray for the, you know, pray for the family, pray for the church. And I said, look, I said, you tell that pastor, if, 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 can't, you know, if you don't have church Sunday, that, that's okay with me. I don't have to preach. And he said these words. He said, God has ordained that a man of God come from Jimmy Swagger Ministries to pastor my church tomorrow. Sunday, while there he's here. And the message that the Lord gave me was, when you have wits in, and you're told, going to and fro, you don't know, you feel like a drunken man, what do you do? How do you, how do you go through this? How do you make it? How do you face it? And that Sunday morning, I preached on this exact text right here, concentrating and when you go through a storm, when you're on water that is just, in, just and you're at wit's end, what do you do? And I said, and then you cry unto the Lord in your distress, and the Lord will heal you and to hear you. Then I read these verses again. I'll read them to you. He says, and he make the storm calm so that the waves there are still. They are glad because they be quiet. So he bringeth them into a desired haven. That pastor told us that Monday, he said, we would not have known what to do. He said, but when, you, when that message was preached, a peace came over myself, over my wife, Anna, and over my whole congregation. And here's an amazing thing. I was going to preach something else, the three finishes in the Bible tonight. He said he was finished in, in Genesis. He said he was finished. When Jesus said he was finished on the cross, and then he's going to wrap this up in Revelation and say, I'm the Alpha and the Meg. It's done. But the Lord said, there's other people. There's other people that you're going to be speaking to. You know, years ago, let me show you how much God cares for us. Years ago, we was preaching a little, and Brother Donnie knows him, Mike, Mike Brook, Brother Brook, 
for the Mike Brooks Church. And we're preaching there, and we had a great service, and it's, the service starts at noon. I don't know why they started at noon, but that's what they did. And about 3 o'clock, we're finishing the service, and I feel in my heart not to dismiss. And so I told the pastor, and I said, I think we can't dismiss. He said, okay. So I said, I told the congregation, I said, would you just please be still? I said, we're not going to sing any song. We're just going to pray quietly. I don't think we can dismiss yet. Don't know why. And trust me, when you have that many people in that building, and you didn't preach, and they want to go home, it's not comfortable. I'm sitting on that platform on the edge of it, and I'm seeing people holding on to their purse wanting to get out of town. And I'm going, please don't leave. I mean, that wasn't comfortable. But all of a sudden, Pastor Mike jumps off the platform, goes down the aisle, goes through the double doors of the, of the vestibule, and comes back in with two ladies, an older lady and a younger lady. And he points down at them and says, they want to get saved. I went, oh, praise God. So they came up, and I said, you, I understand you want to give your heart to the Lord. She said, yes, both of them. It was a mom and a daughter. And she said, yes. And they, uh, we led them to the sinner's prayer. They gave the heart to the Lord. And I thought that they worked in the nursery and were coming up from, from the basement to come in. No. What happened was the young girl was on drugs and would go all over the place. And her mom, she'd call her mama when she would get in trouble, and mama would go get her, then she'd bring her home. That day, now it's like 4 o'clock. That day, the mom and daughter's talking, and the mama tells to the daughter, said, sweetheart, we got to stop this lifestyle, both of us. We need to get right with God. I mean, we just need to start serving the Lord and stop, stop all of this. And the mama said, if there was only a church that was open right now, we'd go into that church and walk in there and give our heart to the Lord. A mile and a half later, coming around the curve in Welch, West Virginia, there was a bunch of cars <laughs> in the church parking lot waiting on that mama and that little girl. God was waiting on her. And she gave her heart to the Lord, both of them. She served the Lord. So if you don't think God's involved and God care, don't care, yes, he does. And I've come by tonight to tell you, whatever category that you find yourself in, if you find yourself in the category that you've been wandering in life, trying to find a right path, come to the cross. Then they cried unto the Lord in their distress, and he heard him. Or maybe you rebelled and in darkness and need to come out of darkness and change to be broken off your life. Cry unto the Lord. Come to the cross, and he'll heal you and bring you a path straight. Have you been foolish in your life and need healing? Cry unto the Lord. Come to the cross, and he'll heal you. He'll restore you. Or like you, a lot of us, seeing all the circumstances around the world and around our country wants to come. It's like, man, how much can more can we take? And we feel like we had wits in, like it seems there's no good news nowhere. But we cry unto the Lord, and He'll hear us. The cross is the answer. Somebody says, "Well, I'm saved," but yeah, but it's not much more as we preach here. Even these everyday lies and everyday things we go through, we don't need to handle those either. 
Give them all to him. When you give them to him, he'll hear you and he'll respond. Because that's the kind of God we serve. Musicians, singers, come back. I challenge you today. You know, I, my wife and I have been through a lot of different things through life. But I can just remember that every time we've been through difficult times, we just, it's really simple, folks. He's made it so simple for us. The cross has made it possible. So all we have to do is anchor our faith in that. And these things that we go through as Christians, and even as, as Christians when we face these things, that he, he'll walk us through it and bring strength through it because he's the one that paid the price for us. But it's just up to us. It's up to us. We can hold on to it. Or we can say, Lord, you already paid that price. Now I'll give it to you. And I don't know what category you may be in. And I, by television, I don't know what category you may be in, but I know one of those four, where some are facing that. But the biggest thing that I believe the Lord has spoke to me or about is storms in people's lives. You're going through some storms in your life. These other things are vital and important to be redeemed of, but they're storms in life. Some may be even saying, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to handle that situation. Maybe there's a storm in your marriage. Maybe there's a storm in relationships. May there be other storms in other situations. But the Lord's put, take care of it. All we do is cry unto the Lord in our distress, and you hear us. Amen. I want to open these altars up. Whatever area you find yourself, just come and cry unto the Lord. And I know he'll hear us when he cries. Would you stand? Amen. Whatever you're facing tonight, look, it's, it's more of a sin to keep it than it is to get rid of it. Just bring it to him. Just come. Hallelujah. Jesus, we thank you. We pray. We cry unto you, Lord, for what you did on Calvary. Thank you, Jesus. If I can get our pastors to go, okay. Hallelujah. Tom, just take this opportunity. tonight.
you slip up your hands all across this audience tonight as they sing this little chorus one more time. Just begin to worship Him, whatever you're in, whatever you're going through. God is able to bring you through. you to remember what Pastor Dale said tonight. Every one of us, under the sound of our voice, is either coming out of a storm, in the middle of a storm, or about to go into a storm. But wherever you may be, the key is, is cry unto the Lord, and He will hear your crying. And I believe that he will. If you just keep looking to Calvary, he'll never let you go. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise tonight. Thank you, Brother Dale, for that tremendous word. I want you to turn around and tell your neighbor you love him. Be back with us on Wednesday evening for our midweek Bible study. We love you. God bless you. We'll see you Wednesday night. Yes, I trust me. hope you were blessed and enjoyed this live service from Family Worship Center. Family Worship Center, located in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, at Jimmy Swaggart Ministries, holds three services weekly, Sunday morning at 10 a.m., Sunday evening at 6 p.m., and Wednesday at 7 p.m., all Central Time. All services are broadcast live on the Sun Life Broadcasting Network, Sun Life Radio, online at sunlifetv.com, and on the free SBN Now app. To join the Family Worship Center Media Church, Call 1-800-288-8350 or join at jsm.org. Live services are produced by the Sun Life Broadcasting Network.